Hello YouTube! Dell's XPS lineup is well known for its great build quality, flexible screen options and adequate performance in modern, well-designed chassis. For 2022 Dell completely revamped the smallest of the bunch, the XPS 13. And instead of just one, we get two very different notebooks this time around. We had the chance to test two different configurations for both the regular XPS 13 and the new Plus variant and thought it might be a good idea to compare the two and tell you which XPS is the right one for you. Since this is more of an overview video, should you be interested in specific details or selected performance or benchmark results, I linked all of our original reviews in the caption below. While the available color options differ between the two models, you can hardly tell the two apart when they are closed. The regular XPS is marginally thinner and has a few more rounded edges, which is something you will only notice when you pick them up side by side. The story changes once you open these two up. While you are greeted with a relatively traditional appearance for the XPS 13, the Plus model looks very different. It lacks the chiclet keyboard from the regular model and the touchpad is integrated completely within the glass palm rest area, making it look very clean and stylish. In addition, Dell replaces the function keys with a set of capacitive touch buttons that further boost the modern, design-focused look of the Plus model. They both feature very narrow display bezels, resulting in a screen-to-body ratio of 89%. In terms of ports, both models are equally minimalistic. Two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C is all you get. To soften the blow somewhat, Dell includes two adapters for both models. One USB-C to USB-A dongle and a 3.5mm to USB-C to connect your headphones or headset. Under the hood, the Plus model has the advantage, since you can at least upgrade or repair the NVMe SSD, whereas every component is soldered to the motherboard within the regular XPS 13. As I already mentioned, the keyboard and the touchpad are one of the key areas where these two differ from one another. The XPS 13 comes with a chiclet style keyboard and it should please almost everybody in no time. While it only sports minimal travel, the pressure point is very clear. It bottoms out really quickly though, making it feel like you're typing on a very solid surface. The larger keys without any space between them on the Plus models feel much softer in comparison. This doesn't mean the keyboard feels mushy, it still offers the same clear pressure point, rather the stroke is dampened slightly. While it takes a little while longer to get used to the larger keys, Dell still managed to make a good keyboard for everyday use. Which one you prefer in the end is up to you and your personal preference, of course. You would think having an invisible touchpad would seriously restrict its usefulness. But to my personal surprise, you forget about the non-existent visual cues on the XPS 13 Plus after a few minutes. It just feels very natural to use and both clicks and navigating the XPS felt smooth and responsive. The clicks are more subdued compared to the regular model, but still felt precise and satisfying. The traditional touchpad in the XPS 13 is exactly that. A solid option to navigate your machine that offers no reason to complain and worked absolutely fine and reliably during our testing. Both XPS models come with a variety of display options. The non-plus 13-inch comes with your choice of Full HD panels with or without touch and a touch-enabled 4K option, whereas the Plus offers an additional OLED panel as well. While the panels seem to be the same on paper, our test shows that the Plus screens have the edge in terms of contrast, at least in the configurations we tested. That said, both models offer very good screens for both everyday use and entertainment. If you want to dive deeper into our display tests, please head over to our written reviews. With those you can find in-depth information on brightness levels, contrast, color reproduction and you can even download our ICC color profiles should you use the same display model. Alright guys, let's talk performance. Apart from the design, it's where these two couldn't be further apart. While the Plus models get the high-end Alder Lake P treatment, the regular XPS comes with the new U CPUs that are much more optimized for efficiency and therefore battery life. In our performance rating, the flagship i7-1280p offers almost 40% more performance and almost triples the scores in a Cinebench R23 run compared to the i5-1230U and its cheaper sibling. System performance for the Plus models is amazing. One could almost forget that this is in fact an ultrabook after all. 
Even the regular XPS can hold its own and actually delivers a much better experience than you would think from the benchmark numbers. That said, don't expect to use it for heavy multitasking or even content creation tasks. In terms of SSD performance, the Plus models have the edge once again and offer solid and stable transfer rates. The regular XPS has to make do with slower SSDs that can't really keep up with today's standards. As a big surprise to absolutely no one, neither of these is a proper gaming laptop, since they both use the Iris Xe iGPUs that we already know from last year's Tiger Lake CPU generation. Nonetheless, the Plus model has the edge once again with its higher count and execution units, and might therefore enable you to play older titles in low to medium settings. In real-world work or entertainment scenarios, both iGPUs gave us no reason to complain and offer more than enough performance for everyday multimedia tasks. Again, if you want to dive deeper into the performance differences between these two, please head over to our written reviews. My colleagues Andreas and Sebastian have been hard at work to provide you with all the necessary information. One area in which the regular XPS 13 surprised us is its sound quality. The sound coming from the two-way speakers offers a very rich sound stage and even some bass, which is very surprising for such a small and thin device. In stark contrast, the Plus is very disappointing in this regard, making the regular model the Netflix and YouTube machine to beat. The same holds true for battery life. While the regular XPS 13 might have to play second fiddle in terms of performance, it can almost double the battery life of the larger models and offers amazing runtimes no matter what you do with it, even with higher brightness levels. In our standard Wi-Fi test, the XPS 13 can last almost 15 hours and even under load 2.5 hours is very respectable. Alright guys, let's wrap this up. Which XPS should you buy this year? Well, as always, it really depends on your use case and what you plan to do with your laptop. Considering the price difference, the XPS 13 starts at around $1200 or euros respectively, the base option might be the perfect fit for everybody that needs a long-lasting typing YouTube or Netflix machine. Since both devices offer high-quality chassis and screen options, you're not giving up anything in terms of build quality or other everyday creature comforts. While the keyboard and touchpad might not look as fancy as in the Plus models, they still offer a great typing experience and usability. And with much longer battery life, the regular models definitely win the endurance crown. Should you be primarily focused on performance and like to use devices that just look great and offer that extra bit of technical finesse, then the Plus models starting at around 1800 bucks should be on your shortlist. CPU performance in short loads and single core scenarios offer scores beyond the Ultrabook territory and should even please content creators or heavy multitaskers. That would be it for today. Please let us know in the comments below if you like these kinds of comparison videos and consider subscribing to the channel and to like the video should you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Alex, you have been absolutely amazing and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.